Hello, students. Michael Sanchez, violin fiddle teacher here, uh, author of Fiddle for Dummies. So, uh, yeah, we have um, nine students that are here with us today. And um, a lot of these students I've actually never met before. And I always like to give, you know, really good uh, technique tips, you know, whether you're playing the violin, whether you're playing the fiddle, uh, there's a lot of similarities. Um, half of my book is just about, you know, technique, not just uh, for fiddle, but for violin, because they really apply similar similarly. And um, yeah, some of the students that are here today are interested in learning the fiddle, but, um, you know, maybe they haven't gotten some, some technical advice. So yeah, I'm going to basically give them uh, some tips based on their playing. We have uh, four students that are going to play today. And then, um, yeah, I, like I said, I've never actually heard them play, so everything is sort of fresh and on the spot here. So, um, so yeah, hopefully enjoy. I, I wanted to introduce um, uh, another instructor that's with us today, Mary Ann Frisco. Uh, Frico. Uh, Frico. She is Frico. Sorry, I, I say that wrong. <laughs> um, so Mary Ann's been in a lot of classes. She actually was the winner of the uh, contest here recently. She uh, participated in a, a lot of stuff in our contest. Uh, I didn't win the bow, though. No, I didn't, didn't win the bow. She didn't win the bow, but she was um, the winner of the most entries, which takes a lot of work. So she, she's she been in a lot of classes. So, yeah, how, how you doing, Marianne? I'm good. Thank you. Good. So, yeah, um, can't assume everybody's seen you. So if you want to just introduce yourself. Oh, um, I started out with classical violin uh, just over 50 years ago. And... Uh, when I was working at a mental health center in Midland, Michigan, I was with a group that started that wanted me to play fiddle with them. So that was probably when was that? 1980, 1980 something, 82. Yeah. So uh, that's when I started learning fiddle tunes and fiddle style. And I'm I'm in down in Nashville now, uh, learning old uh, playing with an old time group. So uh, but I think my favorite is still Irish fiddle. I've learned, I've had some workshops in Irish, Scottish, and my favorite's probably Irish. So the old time is, is great, though. I'm having a great time. I'm also listening to old recordings, to old field recordings, to understand more about the style. And that's my interest area, is learning the different fiddle styles. Excellent. Thanks for I also play the I also play the Celtic harp, So and I have a Paraguayan oh, harp. So I didn't know that. I, cool. I know a little bit about that too. I have one of those. Wow. Yeah. I, I have a whole house full of, of different instruments <laughs> from awesome. mandolin to Chinese ear who to uh, a <laughs> Paraguayan harp. You are such so, a blessing but, to this class. I mean, just all that experience. Um, so, yeah, thank you so much for being here. And uh, I look forward to learning more about some of those other instruments. That's cool. Thanks. Yeah. I've, I've struggled with uh, trying to get, get rid of the classical sound when I play. Oops. Uh, you're muted, Marianne. You muted yourself. Ah, I must have. Uh, yeah, I, uh, my issue has always been trying to get rid of the classical sound and, and sounding like a fiddle player without playing out of tune. So that's why I had such an interest in style. Very cool. Well, you have to get the harp sometime and, and bring it on here. That'd be pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe next week. I'm, I'm really best at fiddle though that's uh i started playing when i was nine years old i think in neat. elementary school neat cool all right so uh so yeah we're gonna basically bring on um you know three students and uh you know all fiddlers need technique advice so i encourage you guys that are watching um that are interested in fiddle come on next week we're last week we learned about droning and we had a great discussion i encourage you to watch that video recording it's on youtube um, but today we're going to yeah give some really good technique tips, make sure you guys are on the right track. So we're actually going to start with uh, Marcos. Marcos is from Argentina. He's uh, Literally, I've had lots of students online, and um, I don't remember the last student I've had from Argentina. So welcome. Uh, tell us a little bit more about yourself and, um, yeah, your uh, progress on the violin so far in, in fiddle. Well, hello. I'm Marcos, and I'm 44, 44 years old. I'm a Catholic priest and I work I work as a priest. I I I I am here in in a church, in a little church in in, in a little town in Argentina. So I've been I've been a priest for eleven years now and I've started playing the violin many years ago, but I I, 
I, I feel that for the last three years I had a, a great teacher who, who made me made me jump forward and correcting some bad habits I, I, I had and and well that's that's pretty much it. Wonderful. Very cool. So I was complimenting your uh, your English earlier because yeah I think that's part of the reason why I don't get a lot of Argentina students because they don't uh, speak English. So <laughs> you're uh, <laughs> that's wonderful that you're able to come on here. So um, okay. so yeah I'd love to watch you play, give you some good tips, and um, just you know anything that I see to help you out. So if you want to play something, I don't know if you know any fiddle tunes or not, but I'd love to hear a fiddle tune. Um, well, otherwise, you know, maybe, maybe just a scale or something. I had learned a lot of no I had learned one or two fiddle tunes I think they were Irish and but it was many years ago and since I didn't practice them too much they they went away I mean I don't remember them Oh but, okay Yeah uh, um, anything that you want to play um doesn't matter it could be a scale it could be just open strings it could be a fiddle tune just anything um, that you feel comfortable with. Obviously, I, you know, kind of got you on the spot here. Didn't tell you were gonna, you know, be on. So, hey, anything you want to play? <laughs> okay. Tango. Hey, all right. We got. We always got to give people uh, applause for coming on, especially for number one here playing. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Very good job. You know, I, I get very nervous when I play in front of people. It's my heart beats faster and my fingers tremble, and it's it's awful. <laughs> yeah, I think Val is uh, relating to you down there. <laughs> yeah. No, I was very good. You know, it's it's always it's a great experience to come on and do anything you know related to playing for people. Um, I always encourage people that don't do that a lot to to try to get out there. You know, with recitals or with um, just playing for friends or family more. You know, because that's a, that's part of uh, developing as a musician is uh, doing things like this. So congratulations, that's a great step um, if you haven't done right. a lot of that. So yeah, um, as far as technique goes, um, you know, a lot of things look really good. Um, one thing I'll mention. Um, in the left hand, um, I love that you're doing the slides. That's a, a really good technique with fiddling, uh, sliding. But I'm noticing that you're actually moving the whole hand to slide. So I would uh, recommend just trying to only use fingers all the time, uh, whether you're playing violin or fiddle, um, and keeping the hands still. So you see here how my, um, from the fingers down, my um, hand is not moving, even though I'm sliding right now. I see. Yeah, so what that's going to do, it's going to help intonation quite a bit. Um, it's going to um, help you to play faster, you know, when you don't have hand movements as well. Um, if you only are using fingers, you can play very fast on the fiddle. So definitely try to avoid that. Um, so, yeah, I, I would say that. And, uh, but, yeah, your finger angles look great. Um, finger height looks very good. So you have, you've obviously had a good teacher. Um, that's, great. that's brought you along well. So that's really good. Um, as far as the um, the right side, as far as the uh, the staccato out, off the string, I would try to let the um, let the bow do more of the work when it comes to um, off the string. Uh, what you were doing there is spiccato, right? Um, yeah. Um, but yeah, I kind of noticed that you were picking the string a little bit more than maybe uh, letting the bow kind of sink in and do the work. So that tells me that you're you're grabbing it a little bit too tight here to do that. You're kind of doing more of this. Instead of relaxing the hand, using the index and letting the bow do the bouncing. Great. So here would be the difference. This is um, what you were doing a little bit. You're going kind of more picking. But what I want you to do is relax more in the hand, um, let the bow sink into the strings, and let it kind of grace more. Yeah, I would, um, I would try to, uh, maybe instead of being right at the frog, maybe come up just a little bit. It's going to be a little bit more of a bouncier part of the bow. 
Um, and I, I do sense maybe that you're pressing up against the bow with the thumb and the pinky just a little bit. Um, if I was if I was there, which I'm way far from you, right? Obviously. <laughs> um, what I would try to do is I would grab your bow randomly and I would try to circle it around while you're doing that staccato, spiccato, and most likely you wouldn't let me grab it very easily, right? You're maybe grabbing it kind of tight there. So try to have this a little more relaxed. The, the violin's holding the bow for you. Um, and then, yeah, it's gonna sound a lot more um, consistent if it's more of the bow bouncing into the strings instead of you telling it what to do. That sounds already a lot better. Great. Great. Yeah. So, yeah. And uh, to tie this into the fiddle, um, <laughs> this actually is uh, a technique that is done during like Faded Love. I don't know if you guys know the song Faded Love. Um, no. But we actually go off the string in the beginning of the piece. So um, this is how it's played. <laughs> So that's kind of what we're talking about there. Yeah. So beautiful, so beautiful. Oh, thank you. Yeah, so uh, hopefully that helps. Um, really, you're doing a lot of things very well. I can tell you've been uh, you know, playing a lot and, and you have a good teacher, obviously. And, uh, and yeah, I would just say work on relaxing more in the hand. When things get more challenging in the right hand, or sorry, with the music, um, it's easier to tense up and grab the bow harder and do things like that. So that's a case there. Um, and then, yeah, just with the sliding, or maybe there's other spots in, in music that you play that you're maybe moving too much of the hand. Just try mm -hmm. to just use the fingers. Great, that's great. Can I ask you a question? Yeah, yeah, please. Because I, I always struggle with trying to stay, trying to stay, to yeah, to have my, my bow straight. I mean, I, I feel like, I know that I have to, um, extend my my arm in order not to to do this, but I, but when I concentrate on the left hand, when I when I try to to play in tune, when I'm very aware of the notes, I I kind of forget about my my right hand, and so I start I start to to bounce my 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 bow. Yeah, yeah. Uh yeah, that's very common. Um, obviously, yeah, a violin is a, is a multitasking instrument, right? It's got a lot of things going on at once. Um, so what I recommend for that is, um, let's say you're learning a new piece and you're dealing with that issue, try to segment. So it's, there's no shame in just working on pizzicato, focusing on the left hand, and then um, working on the right hand separate and then putting them together. That's one thing. Uh, the other thing that that might imply is that the music that you're playing is a little bit more challenging than where you should be at. That's another potential, but I can't say that for sure. I don't, haven't heard you play enough uh, to, to assume that. Um, but yeah, it's either one of those two things, to um, segment or to maybe um, play something a little bit easier. Great, great. Thank you. Yes, uh, Marianne has something to add. Let me, let me add, it sounds like you were talking about moving your shoulder, that you play with your shoulder a little bit. When, when you were showing us, that's what it looked like. Uh, you might try playing uh, those kinds of tunes against the wall. What you do is you take this shoulder, the right, the shoulder, the bow shoulder, and you lean that against the wall, so that, so, and then you can't move it. Uh, That's a yeah. good way. <laughs> I mean, you you literally flat against the wall. The upper arm is flat against the wall, and then only the lower arm can move. So you can't play with the shoulder then. That's Great. Good... Thank you so much, Mary. Yeah. Awesome. Who says you can't teach technique? That was good. That was awesome tip. <laughs> she didn't really say that. She just, you know, we were just talking before this and, and she knows so much about fiddling and uh, also technique. So we're trying to get her to give as many tips as we can on here. All right, so uh, so yeah, thank you. Thank you, Marcos. I appreciate you coming on. And um, if you have any questions throughout the week or um, yeah, feel free anytime else to come on. Um, if I don't talk to you again, thanks so much. It was nice to meet you. Thank you. Same, same. It's the same for me. Thank you. If, I, if I'm ever in Argentina, I'll make sure to um, try to find you and eat some good Argentinian food. Yeah, asado.
meat, Argentinian meat, it's, it's the best. <laughs> sure. <And good> wine. <laughs> Thank you. Thank my, you. my uncle's girlfriend lives in Buenos Aires, so the, he goes to visit her every winter, and she comes here in the summer. He's 92, <laughs> and he flies there all by himself. Oh, my gosh. That, that must be a reason. That's a reason that it must be pretty cool there in more ways than one. <laughs> awesome. All right. So let's uh, continue on with the class. And um, we have a couple other students willing to play here for us. So uh, Anthony is from New York. How are you doing, Anthony? Good. Good, good. So uh, how long have you been playing for? And uh, where, I didn't say where are you from, but New York. Um, and what are you interested in learning with uh, violin or fiddle? I like Irish tunes. I've been playing for about a month, but I just started fiddling a few weeks ago. Neat, so. neat. Yeah, and uh, you said it sounded like you were already playing some some uh, some fiddle tunes, and uh, you were having maybe some challenges with some string crossings stuff like that. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I'm glad you came on. I definitely can help you out, give you some tips. So, yeah, um, if you want to play anything in particular, um, doesn't have to be extremely hard. Just maybe a scale or something. Um, then I'll be able to tell kind of what you're doing. Um, but yeah, whatever you want to play. Awesome. Really good for a month. Wow. Yeah. Thank you. you must play a lot or do you have a music like background or what's the story? No, I don't. Um, I have a friend who plays really good Irish songs. He's playing for 11 years. Uh -huh. And um, I just kind of learned from this Okay, so you're obviously practicing a lot and stuff, uh, watching a lot of videos and trying to learn. Do you actually have a teacher or? No, I don't. You just watch him. I just watch your movies. So. Just watch my videos. Okay, so you've been learning some tips from me, some technique. Yeah. Wonderful. Well, that's a, that's a good, you know, that makes me feel great because that's you're doing a lot of things good. Wow, very nice. Great. Um, obviously, there's a few things, yeah, I can mention. There's always something to improve on. Um, so let me give you a couple tips, if you don't mind. Um, yeah, I mean, really, the, the, the setup is, is good. It just the wrist needs to be straighter, Anthony. Um, that's one big thing. You're, you're a little bit, I think you're relying on the left hand to hold the instrument instead of holding it from the chin and shoulder. Um, go ahead and just hold the instrument with no hands for me. Okay, so that's how it should be, but being that your wrist is so in, that implies that um, quite often. So um, at any time, make sure that somebody couldn't take the instrument from you easily. That's important. So go ahead and just set up with your wrist straighter. Let me see how that looks. Okay, good. That looks good. The left hand looks great. The knuckles are up nicely. Can you do the beginning of Harvest Home for me with a, wrist, with a straighter wrist? Okay, yeah. Yeah, um, your angles were a little bit off just because I think you're not used to that change there, getting the wrist up, so we have to make sure the angles are up and the second finger is higher, the F sharp. Uh, but good job, good adjustment. Um, yeah, the other thing I would say is um, the thumb position is really important. So your thumb is way back here. So make sure that the thumb is level with the first finger. That's gonna help you be more accurate and in tune. So um, that's another thing I would say. So the thumb position, the wrist straighter, the knuckles are great. Um, the right hand, you're doing a lot of things pretty advanced for a month, but you're sort of getting it. Um, there needs to be more index happening for the string crossings. Um, I'm curious in how you just sound in a, in a typical scale. 
Uh, if you can just play for me a scale for me, just long bows, I can take a look at what you're doing. Good, good. Um, I sh yeah, uh, as far as the scale goes, uh, I won't get too far into this, but the, uh, the G major scale has high second fingers on G and D and then low uh, second fingers on A and the E. So just watch the intonation on, this, on the scale itself. Um, and then, sorry, one second, phone. <laughs> um, one moment, just so I have a clear head as I continue on here. It's hard to talk while the phone's going. <laughs> It's like, ah! I think it's my mom. <laughs> okay, so um, so yeah, as far as uh, what I was mentioning there with the scale, yeah, just watch your intonation, that's important. Um, yeah, and then the right side, you're, you're doing a lot of good things, but you're moving a lot, too, you're way too much of your elbow. So as you're on the same string, your elbow should stay in the same position, it shouldn't dip, it shouldn't move all around. <clears throat> so um, what I would actually do if I was there, I would keep you on the same string and make sure that your, your elbow stays level like this, and then you're bending your wrist le nicely like this. I loved how much bow you used. That was excellent. A lot of things you're doing really, really well for a month, like excellent work for a month. Um, but yeah, <clears throat> that's sort of a bad habit that you're moving around and using a lot of arm. Um, I think you're using less index than you could, but you've only been playing for a month. That's understandable. But yeah, to be able to play Harvest Home fast and play it accurate, we need to be using more here. And I think you're using too much here. So it needs to be more compact. Um, but yeah, try the scale again. And can you just keep your elbow more still on the same string? It, it does go down to the A. When you go to the A string, it does move down. But um, when, when, when you're on the same string, keep it in the same spot. Great adjustment. Yep, that was fine. You got some potential, my friend. Yeah, you really do. Yeah, I don't throw that out very often. You do. You you ha you have some good stuff going for a month. Um. So yeah, but I think uh, yeah, your intonation it could be a lot better. Your angles could be better set up. Um. You're uh you're not I don't think under fully understanding the scales yet. The G major scale, the D and C. Um, I did actually just write an article on my website on the scales. Um, I recommend checking that out. Um, and also, yeah, I mean, since, um, you know, I won't necessarily be able to help you um, with everything with the scales, I recommend going to my YouTube channel, type in Violin Tutor Pro Scales and just start studying some of that. Because, um, yeah, it's going to be really helpful to um, know how to do all those scales and improve um, further with that. Because, yeah, if you do scales, you do some uh, some work with um, with your right side with your elbow and then kind of correct a few bad habits yeah you're you're gonna do really well so um yeah uh really great work any questions um how old are you no. by the way can i ask how old are you i'm 12. oh wow <laughs> cool very cool yeah yeah you have I some potential he watches your videos all the time, so really? thank you. Thank yeah. you for all you do. Yeah. <laughs> he was oh, really yeah. excited. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, really, really good. So, yeah, I, um, I have my, uh, my kids' class, actually, on, um, on Tuesdays at 6, Anthony. I would love to have you. There's only about five or six of us. Um, they're all under uh, 18, and they, they come for technique tips. So if you want to come to that as well, I'm not saying you can't come to this either, but yeah, I would love to help you further. So maybe we'll I was see. there. I was there at six. You were there. Okay. So yeah. next time, maybe we'll see you. Okay. Great. Thanks so much. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. So for all of, all of us adults here, don't have this going through your mind because I know it's crossed it, that only kids can do well with the violin. Not true. Kids, here's the thing, they are a little more agile at times, 
but the adult student has more of the disciplined mind. I find that they, um, if they want to learn and, it, and, it, and if a teacher is there to help manage their mind through their process, they can actually do just as well as, as a, as a um, younger student. So I know it's crossed your mind and um, it's just not the case. I have, there's students all over the board that do well and um, hopefully that's an encouragement to you. So <laughs> great. Um, let's uh, go on to, um, well, first, let me see if you guys have any questions. Val, go ahead. How am I supposed to follow that? <laughs> That's a, I, he played Val, wonderfully. Val, that is rare. It really is. I mean, if you, if you take, um, <laughs> if you take a hundred students that have been playing a month, it doesn't, even if they're 12, six, 70, 50, that's that's really good for a month. Um, so that's right. Just, I used I used to teach I used to teach twelve year olds. So yeah, I know they yeah, pick well, it up very go on, quickly. Go on YouTube and look up uh, some uh, twelve year old violinists. There's some that are just incredible, even better than you can imagine. So it's like age age really isn't a factor. It's more just uh, how you know what you do with technique and and how long you've been playing, and um, that's really what it's all about. I'm just in it to have fun. And that's what's most important. So maybe someday you'll play for me and I can give you some tips. <laughs> I'll play. I'll be I'll be game. <laughs> okay. Well, maybe after today, after we chatted about it, then um, you'll feel more encouraged, motivated for next time. And you'll practice something. Well, if you want, I can I can play a quick song. Hey, let's give her a hand. Awesome. We love it. We love the participation, especially after you weren't sure at first. Hey. This is This is very very basic basic. Hey, that's fine. <laughs> That was great. Very, very good. Basic, basic. Basic. Well, hey, yeah, you fall into that category of those students that do really, really well and just think they're not doing well, you know. So that's you. That's a great job. Give yourself some credit there. Cool. And especially being under you Thank know, you. pressure. Cool. <laughs> yeah, you know. Um, hey, you said this was a. This is fiddle class, so this is just, I'm at the basic, basic level. So I'm here to, just to pick up any technique and tips that I can. Absolutely, absolutely. Good. Well, really good job. Um, so, yeah, I mean, intonation was great. Uh, good, good string crossings. So lots going on there. That was great. Um, suggestion for you. Um, try to keep the bow moving more in the transitions. Um, so you're going a little bit fast and then kind of slowing down just a tad at the end and kind of speeding up. So yeah, if we can keep that bow always going the same speed, so I'll demonstrate. Um, so play the same song. So yeah, you're kind of just going going too fast and slowing down and then not transitioning the same way. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah. So just uh, the concept is yo-yo. Yeah. Have you heard my yo-yo concept? Yes. Yep. Yeah, that's exactly that's exactly what's going on. I think just more of a momentum, more of a anticipation, more thinking about transition. Um, but you're really close. It's not, it's not a big thing. Uh, it's good. So great work. Yeah. Thank you. I hope you keep playing and uh, come on again like this. That was really good. Cool. Any questions? Do. Any questions on that? Uh, no. Uh, I'm again. I'm just learning the basic, basic songs and um, learning. Uh, when you were playing it, you were sliding into the note. Yes. Yep. That's uh, okay. ornamentation. Uh, 
technique there. So yeah, there's a lot of ways to add in things in fiddle tunes. Um, so yeah, I mean, I, I would say definitely for you, you're definitely um, playing it well enough to add in some things like that, like the slides and um, maybe even some little grace notes you can put in there. Um, e even accenting, I, I would recommend, you know, just kind of accenting, um, emphasizing notes. Um, Marianne, any, any suggestions on that? I mean, she's playing it well. Um, ways to kind of spiffing up that uh, pill tune that she played. Yeah, I thought you had really good tone, actually, really good sound. Uh, I, yeah, I think uh, you could try a drone. That might be the easiest, an open string. When there's a string that sounds good, just, just try the different strings. Sliding, pick one note to slide to and then just do one note at a time. Start small. Yeah. Okay, thank you both. Yeah, you can actually uh, play it with the E string quite a bit, um, Val. So like, um, play what you just played, but include the E string. <laughs> so essentially I'm playing two strings at the same time. Yeah, yeah, and if that's confusing um, and you've never done that before, uh, last week we actually covered uh, droning in the last class. So uh, Yeah, I wasn't able to here, I was downstate and did oh, okay. not have internet access, so I couldn't come. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's going to take a little bit of work. Yeah. No, that's that's con that's common at first. Um, so that class will be good. Um, it, it teaches like um, how to stay on the same plane properly, and uh, it, yeah, it'd be perfect for adding in that. You could you could try just playing two strings at the same time. Just play the A and E together to get used to it, and then add a put a finger down once in a while. Play yeah. the A and the E. So that yeah, again, practice. <laughs> yeah, and then the drone class I covered uh, finger placement. So if you even barely nick the, um, the string, the E string. Uh, it's going to cause a bad sound. So potentially, that might be where you were um, not happy with the sound is if you just barely nick it. So that's where I'll cover that in that uh, webinar. So great job! Okay. Thank you for coming on. We'll give you another hand, everybody. So far, great job, guys. That's <laughs> awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Great, great, great. All right. Um, so we have one more student that's going to come on. Um, uh, actually, this last student is one of our uh, Violin Shack members. Um, he comes on for uh, for webinars uh, in the afternoons and um, on Fridays. Ed, how you doing? How you doing? Pretty good, good. So you've been working a lot with me on rhythm. Um, right. Yeah, how are things going? Well, I'm trying, working on it. Trying is a good thing. Yeah. Cool. So, uh, so yeah, do you want to play a little bit and then I can, uh, yeah, give you some tips? Okay, I'll play that song, Faded Love, okay? Oh, okay, cool. stars above with every heartbeat I still think of you and remember our faded love hey all right 
Hey, you're you're the first the first one that's ever sang on a class, and I give you props. That was awesome. I can't give you tips about the singing though. Sorry, Ed. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know that. Uh, I went to see a friend of mine. He's uh, an old uh, an old uh, singer from Nashville. He's retired now, and and I played the song the way I usually play. And he said I'm going through it like a like a steam a steam engine. So uh, he told me to slow down as much as possible and try to keep the beat. That was really good. I like the version of it. It was really nice. Yeah, I liked how it There's was. Another verse to it. I remember. I I don't remember the other verse. There's another verse to it. <clears throat> yeah, and I can't wait at um as much work as we're putting in um with the rhythm stuff. Um yeah, some of those tunes that you're playing are just gonna continue to develop. Um, cause yeah, I mean your technique has gone so far this past month. Um, you're keeping the bow and the strings nicely. You're doing so many things better. Yeah, once we can slow you down just a little bit more, um, you mm -hmm. know, some of those notes are going to ring more and kind of, you know, be sustained more. Um, but yeah, even there, like that was compared to the um, the Shokin Farewell that we worked on fr on Friday or Monday, um, you're sustaining already better. I can tell you're practicing it. It's really yeah. good. A little yeah. more, it's, uh, it's nerves a little bit, that's all. Oh, yeah. No, that's good. That's why we wanted to clap for you. So. One more time for everybody. Everybody that's clap. Everybody that's come on. Thank you. Really good. This is fun. So yeah, let me take some uh, some questions um, from anybody here and um, go from there. So yeah, we're basically just to give you guys a um, um, yeah kind of a summary of of what we do here. So we do these classes every Tuesday. Um, Six o'clock we have our kids class. Seven o'clock fiddling. Eight o'clock advanced uh, violin. Uh, and then nine o'clock we have our um, uh, um, beginner intermediate adults that come on. So yeah, it's four hours of teaching. I'm normally really pooped afterwards, but I love it. It's so much fun and I uh, enjoy in, um, helping you guys improve. So so yeah, um, the other thing I wanted to mention, um, you know, we have a lot of, uh, of people that are, um, you know, uh, participating through our website as far as uh, as um, one of our members of the site. So I just wanted to um, tell you guys a little bit about that because. Um, that's really starting to develop really well. So basically, um, I'm teaching uh, webinar classes throughout the uh, afternoon, throughout the um, uh, mornings uh, for students that are interested. And they're basically they're smaller classes. They're um, two to three people in each class. And um, yeah, basically, I can really give some good insights, some good technique tips to all the students. And uh, they each are in two webinars a week, and then they're in um, a private lesson every month. So that's sort of the setup for, for these webinars. And yeah, we actually just had a, um, a student do a really nice testimonial on um, Facebook um, that she's been with me for a month and she's like really, really, um, really happy with everything and how far she's gotten with the violin. So I um, encourage you to check that out on Facebook. But yeah, my, my um, focus is technique and uh, helping students get that solid structure of how to improve. Um, so yeah, the, the membership you can learn more about on the, uh, on the website. Um, I've actually decided to offer um, like a free trial of it. If you guys are interested in that, try it out for, for a um, seven day period. If you guys want to just kind of check it out and, and let me put you in a, at least a few classes to see if you like it. Um, so I encourage you guys to um, uh, go to go to the contact us page on my website and just send me a message and let me know you want to do a free trial of, of the uh, membership. Um, I can set you up and, and get you in a couple classes and, and then you can, uh, you know, check it out. So, so yeah. And um, any other questions that you might have about it throughout the week, email me. Uh, my email is michael at violinshack.com. Um, and, uh, and yeah, my goal is just to help every student that I possibly can improve on the violin and fiddle. And there's so much uh, to be said and improve on. And um, it's fun to, uh, to just put these together and, and to uh, work with you guys. So yeah, any questions on that um, or anything else? I'm here to, uh, Help you guys out. So uh, and let's uh, let's give Marianne a hand as well for being here, uh, for helping out with the discussion. She's actually also a member. We just haven't hooked, hooked her into a class yet. She actually got that from her um, getting the most entries in the last contest. So Marianne, you're you're in. We just have to figure out where you're in. <laughs> so um, so yeah, but we have a meeting. We have a meeting on Friday, right, Marianne, for uh, for us to discuss um, sort of how to help each other out, right? Yes, we do. Yes. That sounds great. So you're interested in teaching violin um, and, and uh, yeah, getting some more tips. And, yeah, I, I love the help that you're giving in these fiddling classes. So thank you so much. 
Yeah, it looks like actually, um, since you're, you're really strong on technique, and I, I know a lot about style, maybe we could work together on that. I agree. So. I, that's what I was thinking. You know, I, um, I just love te technique. And, you know, you have really uh, given me a lot of that. Um, Ed, waving at the camera. Ed, what's up? <clears throat> yes, Ed? But uh, I put, uh, I put a, a note on your, uh, on your, uh, to your uh, email there. I was asking you, what's the proper way to uh, do a, a scale, uh, one octave scale on one string? The way I do it, like I say, Dista is the uh, D, I uh, just go D, E, F sharp, and then I, I, I switch to third position, go uh, G, A, B, C, uh, uh, A, B, C, C sharp, and then, uh, or sorry, A, B, C. Uh, yeah, it's, it's basically a... Uh... So it's, a, it's two shifts, isn't not, it? I hope you're not playing it that fast, but um, yeah, it, it's uh, it's basically D, the, you know second finger high position. So you know you got open D, E, F sharp, G, A, B, C sharp, D, and then if you're going up another octave, then you would shift on the D. And go no, no, I'm thinking of one string, okay? If you want to do, if you want to do uh, one octave on one string. Um, I'm not sure why you would. Do it that way. Um, there's other instructors that might maybe um, recommend that, but yeah, I, I normally never practice that. Um, that's, just, a, that's something I was just wondering. Like, like a, you got up here, you're halfway, you got one octave above D there, so you can go. Uh, yeah. yeah, I mean, I I, rec I mean, that's just everybody has different. Um, uh, ways of teaching scales so certainly there's different ways to do it but yeah my way of teaching is basically that we um, go up on the A string always if we're going into third position and then we always go mm -hmm. down on the E string um, that's the way that I teach scales um, that's that's always worked for me that's the way I've been taught with all my teachers um, and uh, and yeah as you get higher and higher that's sort of you can kind of stick to that same um, I'm not going any far, for, I'm not going further than the middle of the string, which is the, the octave. Uh, I just re the reason I'm asking that is because I, I was watching a video about Paganini, and they said he always played at the third position all the time, and he he moved oh, yeah. down when he wanted to and up when he wanted to. So he's always his hands were always at the third position all the time. Yeah, I mean you can. There's uh, plenty of etude that that just emphasize and work you in third position and even higher fifth and seventh and all that. But yeah, scale work can kind of just be the same um, with what I'm saying. Not saying that it can't be done other ways, but yeah, um, I would just recommend just kind of sticking to the basic uh, C and D major, going up on A string, going up down on E string. I don't, I don't see any other reason to do it any other way. Um, but you can certainly do whatever, whatever you're comfortable with. But yeah, that's uh, that's a good way to learn third position. I was a while thinking of different things, you know, and how you played uh, on one string, you know, yeah, one string fiddle. Hey, it's it's uh, the violin lets you do it. <laughs> yeah, that's right. One thing, one, thing I learned, one thing I learned when I was learning uh, third or three and four octave scales is that when you you sure you can go up on the A string, but once you're on the E string, it's one two one two one two one two all the way yeah. up to your fourth octave <laughs> if yeah. you want to go that high. That's that's also awesome, right. That's what I teach as well, Marianne. Yeah, going up one, two. Yeah, I don't know if that's what you're asking, but yeah. I think, you can, was, it's, I think he's just referring to just going up on one string, just continuing up on the same string, right? Up. Yeah, when you're on the E string, that's what you're doing. If you, you, that's how you go up to the like fourth octave. Yeah, so. yeah. I just you were mentioning the D major, Ed, and um, I heard you say the D and the A strings, right? You weren't saying the E string, right? You were just you were more in the middle. Yeah, of the I'm just playing. I'm just like I just took the D string for as an example, okay? You can do the yeah. same thing on the A string if you want to, or, or any string if you want to. It doesn't matter. It's like uh, you play the first two notes, then you shift to the third position. Yep. Play, play, play four fingers, and then you shift to the last two notes. Yep. And so yeah. I, that's just something I was thinking of. I don't know. It just it doesn't yeah. have to do anything with anything, awesome. but it's just a matter of it's a great, thinking. Great question. So, yeah, let's uh, one more time a hand to all the students that played, participated. Um, I hope to see more of you guys next week for our another fiddling class. and. Um, 
you know, I think these are great. We can come on and uh, give you guys some tips on technique. And um, yeah, also talking about a lot of fiddle topics and concepts. And uh, Marianne has been coming every week, so we're uh, very blessed to have her right here. So yeah, I uh, look forward to seeing you guys all next week. We'll post this on YouTube. And um, if you're interested at all in the Violin Shack membership trial, just go on the website, uh, violinshack.com, and send me a message, and we'll hook you up with a free trial. So thanks so much for watching, guys. Uh, Mike uh, Walter, sorry we didn't get to talk to you today. We'll uh, see you next week. Bye. Bye, Val. Thanks so much. Bye. Right. Sorry, Mike. Sorry you came out. I wish uh, we could have talked more. Um, I got another class coming at 9 o'clock if you want to come on or 8 o'clock. Just uh, visit my website um, and then sign up for those. Love to have you. All right, see, good to meet you, Marcos. Randy, thanks so much, Kathy. Anthony, great job. Very good. Lots of potential. Awesome. We'll see you guys. Going to my next class.